reading order flow in depth, reading the footprint in depth, and understand how the market moves is one of the key elements of trading order flow. Uh, welcome, new video on YouTube has been a while, but I'm back uh, on YouTube. Um, little educational video in terms of order flow and how to use order flow trading in depth. Um, still trading indices, um, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, in front of you, we're looking to an S&P 500 charts on the five minute time frame. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, just have highlighted a couple of things um, to, to the upside, and I'm going to show you that as well. Um, value area high level right here, and you can see how beautiful the price pinpoint in this technical wise, but also order flow wise um, to the absolute T. Uh, you can see how this level is being respected for almost three times. And that this level right here, which we have identifying earlier, which was a um, valid um, level of imbalance um, that those big wheels, institutions, uh, whatever, have left behind um, to fill that um, levels up in the markets in terms of new sell orders. Uh, again, I had... Um, uh, last week I saw this lag to the downside, uh, which was absolutely beautiful. And yeah, f footprint wise, I could identify a couple of uh, levels of large levels of imbalances on the S&P 500, but also on the NASDAQ 100. The NAS was absolutely beautiful movements um, that we saw uh, right here, large imbalance. The first one, second imbalance identifying right here, uh, which is confirmed on the footprint chart. Um, also delta wise volume wise but we'll come back to that later <clears throat> you can see that that move away was pretty strong and moves where i'm uh, most of the time looking to are moves that happening around the new york um, session opening okay so around the uh, new york session opening then i'm looking to um, levels of imbalance that has been created a session before um during the Asian or the London session, you know. That means those levels are most of the time pretty new, fresh. So it's highly likely if price will turn back to an imbalance in price uh, in the footprint, that these levels are gonna be uh, respected, you know. So this imbalance get filled during a session opening or um, that can be 15 minutes after, that can be an hour after. Usually if I'm trading the indices, uh, the, the S&P 500, SPX, or the NASDAQ, the NAS 100, uh, around the New York opening, I'm most of the time, uh, based on my statistics, out of the markets within one and a half hour, two hours. Sometimes I can have three days in a row where I have identifying an imbalance on the footprint chart and then seeing price return to that level um, during the New York opening within the first 15 minutes or 30 minutes. And that's absolutely great. If you can create a routine, and put it into play over and over again. Execute it over and over again. That is, that, that is absolutely a great thing. And, um, you know, I want to put myself in the best position possible. And if I'm trading the New York session, uh, and especially indices, they move quite different um, than lots of AVIX pairs, you know. I have traded AVIX pretty successfully in the past as well. But uh, as the time comes, you grow a little bit and you're moving into a new era of trading. You grow as trader, you grow as individual. Um, so that is why I make the choice from moving to AVIX to indices. It gives me pretty large ranges. Also time zone wise, because I'm traveling a lot across different time zones across the globe, uh, and especially New York time zones. It's almost impossible to hop onto the London session, for example. But you can apply order flow definitely on Forex as well, such as GGBP, the Euro, uh, the Pound, you know, it's, 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 it's possible. We have a lot of order flow traders that applying this same method, but then in the London session, for example, you know, but you have to do what, what suits you. And that's why I'm moving to indices. And to make a long story short, indices, S&P 500, NASDAQ, absolutely great. Um, a couple of examples so the imbalance in price right here move away into price then uh, price dumps into a value low uh, we can identify this level right here into a value low level um, then price start to trading back around the opening you can see it right here 
uh, opening around this level, a little push into this level with pretty positive delta. We also keep the delta into play in our trading. I explained this in my uh, in the wheel order course and in the indices uh, order flow advanced masterclass course, uh, pretty in depth. <clears throat> How the delta comes into play, combinated with this in imbalance levels. Uh, you can see that the buyers are stepping in right here, pushing price into this imbalance for a last order grab, liquidity grab. And then you see there is no sustaining on the delta. Then the delta starts to shift uh, massively. Uh, also the volume, you can see the black right here on the on the bottom, how that increases again. And then the delta starts to shift. So that are signs for us that uh, price is probably gonna uh, reverse right here and continue the overall uh, direction because this overall direction was simply sellers, you know. If you zoom this picture out, you can see a large uh, sellers wave, you know. Uh, technical wise but also on the footprint wise you can see this is this is purely sellers which you can see and this move right here is purely a correction in price and this is the beauty about trading the footprint um, that you can see those moves happening in terms of the data fee you know uh, and that's something something great uh, on order flow and that's why i'm really love order flow because i can see what's happening into price from minute to minute and how those uh, wheels are stepping in, stepping out, and how those orders are gonna be taken over and over again. And like I said, I have identifying this level uh, around the London, um, New York overlap uh, in the midday, you know. Then you can see that the price are starting to tank in, into this level. Uh, ask side also start to appear. So you can see that the ask uh, start to step in and then the Delta didn't sustain which was an aha moment for me from, okay, sellers are ready to to uh, yeah, to yeah sell off, you know? And then you can see that large liquidity push also technical wise, probably in a nice rejection candle, you know? And keep in mind, not every rejection candle is a rejection candle. Uh, you can have a rejection candle somewhere in the middle of the range, but there is no imbalance to fill. It makes no sense to sell off or to buy off. You got my point? And this is the thing about order flow, no guessing. Just purely seeing what's happening within the market and based your decisions on that, executing, you know? Okay, again, to make a long story short, you know, uh, we saw this happening for almost uh, three times into this level, just to give you an, an idea of using this order flow chart. First time, this was around the, 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 the New York opening. Second time was later uh, later in the session, price came back, This so the push away, uh, price came back. Um, then we see again sellers uh, start to appearing, um, and then we saw a move away again. After that, later in the session, probably a trade that I have missed it, it's almost a third time back, and it's, it's value area high, so it, it makes sense. Uh, but on the other hand, it's pretty late in the session, you know? And usually in the end of the session, there was also a move uh, when the New York start to um, start to close. Uh, we see almost the same scenario happen. We see sellers on the ask side confirm it on our imbalance levels that we have identifying back in the uh, in the session uh, around the, the opening. We are in a, something an hour an hour and a half uh, away from the New York closure uh, that there was start to. You can see that buying off on the delta right here and then the selling off in the delta again which is again a confirmation but you can see how that moves start to move away from this price territory okay three times yes usually is that maximum for me um, and imbalances being created on the footprint over and over again um, and my core focus really relay on the new york session because that's where the volume is that's where the wheels are being active uh, this this is where the in, uh, this is where the S&P 500 Nasdaq uh, being traded, you know. Uh, also US 30, you know. Um, but for me, I'm purely focusing on the Nasdaq and um, S&P 500. Order flow wise, they're beautiful to identifying imbalances into price. Uh, okay. After that, you can see that large move away. Then we start to trade back to this level. Okay, this level is now uh, invalid. Uh, and the second level that we have identifying on the footprint chart, um, you can see that there is an uh, imbalance into price that we have identifying as well, which was in higher territory, also being pretty nice respected as well. Uh, you can see it right here. There was an absolutely tank into price. 
uh, again around the New York uh, session opening. Uh, Stellars start to appear again. Delta start to shift again. Volume start to increase large. Uh, so yeah, again a nice sign of sellers move into this level of imbalance, which was untouched, which was fresh. So that's confirmed, it. and that's absolutely the beautiful thing about trading order flow uh, in depth. You know, this is just a simple explanation, but just to give you an idea on how uh, beneficial order flow trading can be for you, uh, and just the simplicity of it, then just sitting in front of a chart uh, i don't know six seven eight hours which for me uh make no sense you know i can use my day productively and on the other hand it gives you so much opportunity in so more uh, so um uh, small time range you know and th this makes it really powerful for me and this is also why i decided to move uh, from uh, avix to indices is because yeah you know new york session uh time zone wise, but also uh, the amount of time that I can spend in front of the chart and the large range of indices are probably the most important thing for me where I make the decision from, okay, it's time to leveling up. It's time to shift a little bit. If you can see this, this move, for example, how much point this did and the NASDAQ, it's vice versa. It's almost the same. It moves quite the same as well. It moves quite the same. Uh, NASDAQ has even uh, most of the time a larger price range so that makes it even more interesting you know uh, but i have two assets you know as a 500 and the nasdaq because yeah uh, then i have almost always when i'm trading at least the one opportunity uh, around the new york opening or a few hours after you know uh, like i said usually limit myself to maximum one and a half hour two hours in the session and that's it you know um, so that's it Anyway, that was a little explanation on the NASDAQ and large levels of imbalance into price. Uh, if, you, if you want to do the same thing or you're probably doing already in the same thing, have my education, the wheel order or the new indices uh, uh, order flow advanced masterclass course, probably you're doing the same thing. You know, that's also the beauty of seeing my traders doing the same thing uh, over and over again and understanding uh, where the bit is, where the ask is how the volume shifts, how the delta gives you the information that there is a real imbalance in price and that that uh, level is being respected, you know, and how that imbalance gets filled, you know. For example, right here, you never see, you never saw a real break of this level. It just was an order grab right here, um, which was confirmed on delta. And uh, uh, yeah, probably you see a rejection candle right here. Uh, most of the time, if the delta doesn't uh, shift with it it's not a real rejection candle keep that in mind and you can confirm that on the footprint chart check it out this level was still a buying move you know this was still a buying move and then we saw that little liquidity move and then we saw that large shift in delta numbers you know we're using this a, a strict amount of delta volume in terms of numbers you know it has to be uh, around an, for example uh, 2k 3k 4k it has to be around a level like this before we can uh, pull the trigger you know uh, same with the volume you know and that's a thing you test over time i have almost tested uh, indices us uh, 500 uh, spx sp 400 and the nasdaq nas 100 uh, for almost eight to nine months straight on purely order to order flow I was trading order flow before already, but to have an edge and an, um, uh, a good understanding of a certain asset that you trade, there was a lot of testing needed, you know. You have, to, uh, you have to collect data. So you have to understand which delta makes sense, which volume makes sense, which imbalance in the market makes sense, what's really happening, what, what, what do the big boys, you know, what are, how are they moving the markets around that trading session? which 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 what numbers you know that's a question that you have to ask yourself and that's how you have to collect your data uh, collecting data is maybe the one of the most important things you give you a clear edge in the market also with with order flow you know it's it's, it's with order flow it's probably the most important thing you know technical wise you're looking to candlesticks and we're still looking to candlesticks but we really want to see what's happening with in a candlestick like this you know and Give yourself the answers that needed before you're gonna execute a trade, you know? 
So this was a little explanation uh, about trading order flow um, and how to apply it and how I see it during the New York trading session. Um, so that's it, you know. On to a next video and uh, welcome back on the YouTube again. Wish you all a great day ahead. Peace out, Kev.